This is Nick Bellafato, and I'm here with San Francisco junior welterweight, the undefeated Kareem Hardhit of Mayfield. Uh, Kareem will uh, make his second appearance on HBO to take on Puerto Rican fighter Tomas DeLorme uh, uh, to be for the vacant NABF title as a co-feature to headline attraction Sergey the Crusher Kovalev. This coming from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Kareem, welcome and thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Um, there was talk of you previously of mixing up, mixing it up with Hank Lundy, but your new promoter, Top Rank, didn't feel he was the best option for you. Um, considering your your take, how, how satisfying is it now that you're taking on Tom, Tomas Delorme? Although he's a less accomplished fighter, you're you're on a much bigger platform, and it could lead to even bigger things. Yeah, well, definitely. Yeah, um, I feel that that was a better opportunity, a better fight. You know, I think um, as an opponent, they were pretty much uh, the best, uh, probably. Um, same caliber of opponents, but the um, the outcome, excuse me, or the uh, payday and the um, what was opportunity was the better um, that they were offering with uh, being able to fight on network t television and um, actually fighting for a title. So definitely the best option was uh, uh, taking on Thomas Delorme. It was a smart move. Uh, how has training camp gone, and who in the way of sparring partners has ventured into your camp, if you care to share? Uh, sparring partners, sparring, excuse me, uh, camp has gone, been going well. Um, I'm sure every fighter says that, but um, my camp has actually been well, just uh, due to the fact that uh, I have world-class sparring, you know. Uh, you know, we had, um, before we left, we had Amir Khan out here, um, Berto, even um, Angulo, and um, also a few other guys, um, Antonio Johnson and Alan Sanchez, who, um, um, that's uh, another great up and coming fighter. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it's been good sparring. You know, uh, we've had uh, some fast guys, hard punching guys, uh, tall guys, and strong guys. So we've been mixing it up. South Falls, we've been adding some South Falls in there because we do know he switch up. So we're prepared for uh, anything he brings us on March 29th. At face value, Tomas is a rangy fighter. He needs room to punch. You make a habit of roughing up people on the inside. Is that what we're going to be looking for uh, uh, from your part? Um, well, you know, um, being with Virgil Hunter, I've um, actually um, became a little um, more technical at times. But uh, definitely that's a part of my style. You know, my coach, Ray Batista, has been here, and uh, he always um, has me to um, make sure I don't go away from any of those, um, any of those uh, abilities that's got me to, um, thus far. So, um, you know, I, I definitely plan on doing certain things um, like that at the time, and um, it depends on how the situation is at the time of the fight. But for the most part, um, that won't be my actual whole game plan, but I'm sure at times I probably will be uh, mugging them. Uh, you're the hard hitter, and Delorme has been pushed along as a showcase talent, uh, as opposed to you. Are, are, did you specifically train for, or might you be looking for more than just a decision win, considering what's at stake, and considering that he kind of been exposed as having a soft chin against the season, Carlos Abreu? Um, well, certainly, you know, I've, um, for the most part, I, I can't remember ever training for to fight for points. So I am always trying to take a guy out. I mean, I'm, 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 I won't rush it, but it will come. Uh, this is a big opportunity for you, um, but at, at times uh, a lot of fight fans find you difficult to watch. Um, and what I'm getting at in extreme sense is you have a, a guy like uh, Guillermo Rigundo, uh, an extreme talent, but at the same time Bob Arum doesn't find him very marketable. Has there been a conscious effort on your part to maybe tweak some things because you mentioned adding in a few new punches to maybe make you more of a hot property or be more, more offensive minded or does that play into what your thoughts? Well certainly, um, you know, my uh, sole objective is always to win um, the fight for the most part, but at the same time you do want to be able to fight on network television, you do want to be, um, have good sportsmanship. So with that being said, um, I have um, actually helped to critique my style, which has actually made me better with um, when people may say wrestling or mugging or whatever, you know, for them not actually liking the style. I mean, regardless, I always just want to come up with a win, but with me, the way that I've figured out to get room, I've actually figured out how not to smother myself so much to where um, um, I can't get punches off. So actually, that was actually, um, what they didn't like was actually um, not doing well. It wasn't good for me at the same time, if they didn't like it, um, excuse me, but now since um, I've figured out how to get more distance, it's actually more crowd pleasing and actually works better in my part, in my behalf. Let's assume you take take care of business against Delorme, maybe rack up another win over recognizable opposition uh, to put you in line for a major title shot. That being said, looking at the 140-pound landscape, all the fighters are, are golden boy with the exception of Ruslan Provodnikov. 
what, what, what's your thoughts on maybe facing uh, the Russian down the road? Um, I definitely, um, that's a fight I, that would, uh, I would definitely like to take. I mean, um, I have, uh, we have similar opponents um, that uh, we've actually fought. Uh, Mauricio Herrera. Mauricio Herrera beat him. I beat Mauricio Herrera. Even though style makes fights, but, I mean, mentally that means a lot to me. But for the most part, um, it's definitely a good fight that I could see that, uh, that could possibly be in the near future. Again, going back to the landscape at 140, they're all Golden Boy fighters. What's your take on maybe moving up to 147 uh, if things pan out your way, if things don't pan out your way at 140 where you have the Bradleys, the Pacquiao's, and the Juan Manuel Marquez as, as being uh, top-ranked fighters? Yeah, well, I definitely take, um, I mean, um, for um, um, the, um, most of my career, I actually fought at 147 pounds until I was offered a title fight, um, an ABO title that I won. But um, I fought, actually, uh, most of my career at 147, so it wouldn't be a problem with me going back to 147 and taking those guys out. Uh, and the last question is, not even a question, uh, I want to let people know that Kareem hard hitter Mayfield is a big supporter of boxing at all levels, including the amateurs. Yes. I see you down at the amateurs, you know, and the, your presence uh, amongst the young fighters is inspirational. Can you, can you talk about that? Yeah, well, you know, um, you know it's, it's good to always see someone that's um, in your position or in the position that you've been in to see them being successful at that. So, you know, I like to go be a light and be inspiration and motivation in them to show them that, you know, and actually, you know, you can hear about them, but when you actually see them in person, it's a good look and it motivates you to do more, it motivates you to work harder. So I like to be a light and to be um, inspiration to them and to show them that, um, that if I can do it and where I started from, I didn't start from a, from a young age, I started very older. Um, I'm actually starting at 20 years old and um, you know just showing that whatever you put your mind to do, you know it's a cliche, but um, hey it's possible to do and it's um, definitely um, just, you're able to make it happen once you put your mind to do it. Kareem, thanks for your time and thanks good luck that. on March 29th. Yes. Thank you, sir. Right on, bro. Thank you.